Hello, this is Joseph from Gorilla3. In this screencast, we're going to be going over our last tutorial, which we created a database and a table, as well as some columns and rows to hold in our users that we will have log in to our sites. Um, the last part that we left off as far as PHP code was actually creating a session and then destroying that session. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and start to clean up our last file. Uh, what we have in here right now is our logouts code as well as our um, login code and then just the basic HTML code. Um, so what I've done is created my little folder here and here you see index, login, and logouts. So the index is going to have most of the basic HTML code. The login is going to have purely PHP code and then it will redirect to our index. And again, the same for the logout, it will have pure, pure PHP code and redirect our index. Um, so let's go ahead and open up these two files here. Um, let's go ahead and delete everything from here and go ahead and take out our login code, which it was primarily this segment here, where it says if set post username. And then go ahead and put some PHP brackets. and paste in the code that we just cropped out from our index. So, um, uh, the error codes will need to be re uh, moved. Uh, well, not exactly moved, but um, done differently. Um, and after that, we should be able to just do a simple, um, or right after that, let's do header. and then location and let's do that. That will redirect to our index.php. Um, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is actually take out the logout code and put that within the logout. So let's go ahead and delete all the default text here. Take the logout code and we're actually going to insert in session in them as well. Make sure you have the session um, start. So we again we do our PHP tags. And we already have our location redirected here. And we can just do a simple that to redirect to our index. And again the logout just destroys the session. But we also need to include session start um, at the very top to ensure that we are using our session. And again, do the same thing for the login code at uh, session start. If you're getting confused as what to do with the code, um, I'll be posting the resulting code at, um, on my site, on the sidebar. Um, so go ahead and just save that as well. And so now we got the basics in here. Um, so what we can do instead of having the saying logout equals one for our logout code we have to actually redirect that to our logout so we just do logout.php okay so now that we have most of our code reformatted um, we can go ahead and just start doing our, our MySQL connection stuff and for that we're, we're going to go to our login and in our login we're going to create um, four basic variables. We're going to create um, the dollar sign db underscore host equals and for the most part it's always localhost. And then we're going to go ahead and do the dollar sign db underscore user which would be the username that we used and if you're using uh, XAMPP um, it would be root and then if we use um, db underscore password, which will be our password, the password for the root was set to nothing. And again, db underscore db, which will be our database. And uh, this is when we created our database. Uh, if you're using cPanel, add a prefix usually if you're in shared hosting. So for me it was animary and then underscore users. And that was the, uh, that was an S. That was the users that we created. 
and again um, it was anime underscore or anime re underscore user and our password was user um, so now that is set we can actually do a database connection and so we're going to go within the if statement so if post username is set um, you can do simply uh, the connection part so we're going to have dollar sign db underscore link equals mysql underscore connect and then within that connect we're going to have our host username and passwords passed to it so we got db underscore host comma db underscore user comma db underscore pass comma or not comma but let's say it for that line and then we can have then we have to connect to our database so once we connect to our table we connect to our database so we do mysql underscore select underscore db and then we're going to add in our db underscore db um, now something we need to add in here is error checking so right before the semicolon and the bracket let's go ahead and make a, a new line tab over and type in or die which would stop the script from executing and we're going to say mysql connection error and let's go ahead and add a dot to concat and then mysql underscore error which is a function so we add the brackets and again let's add the same thing for the select table tab over or um, die and mysql error cannot select table alright so that's our basic connection so I'm going to add a little connection right here connection so now that we have our connection um, we actually can start to write our query that would take in the username here um, and although we have HTML entities, that will get rid of the, the quotes and stuff. But we really don't need that. Um, what we do need, though, is actually to have a way to filter um, the, the quotations that they add in here. That's a way that they use to inject into your MySQL and can fetch data. Um, so what we're going to use is uh, MySQL rail underscore rail underscore escape underscore string and this will basically stop any kind of injection they, they're, they're trying to hack into the database so let's go ahead and replace those for the username and password that we have set 